I want to talk about something which I claim happened before the Big Bang. Now you see this represents a change of mind on my part, um, which used to think like Stephen Hawking and many people that the Big Bang didn't have any before because the notion of before and after didn't mean anything when there wasn't a universe around and so you couldn't even talk about before. Well, I'm going back on that and I claim that there is something before. But before getting to that, let me describe the universe. The uh, second law of thermodynamics says that this thing called entropy, which increases as you go, as time increases, and uh, the thing is that we see in the universe observationally that it looks as though the entropy is very, very high at the beginning, which should be very low because it has to start low. How is it low? It's low in gravity, which means that the universe is made. I don't really want to go into that argument. I shouldn't even start to do it because it's, <laughs> because it's key to the description, but it will distract me too much for what I want to say. I'll just say there's good reason for saying that this can be stretched out. It's very nice. It solves a lot of problems if that is the way the universe, for some reason, stretches out like that. What's the reason? Well, here's what I'm saying the reason is, is because this our universe, as we think of it, starting from the Big Bang, ending up with this eternal exponential expansion going on and on and on, getting you more and more boring as, as time goes on. And the argument is that that, our universe, as we, so, as we thought, is not the whole story. That this future, remember the Escher picture, can be stretched, squashed down, and now it becomes the Big Bang of the next eon. And so this is what I call conformal cyclic cosmology, that we are here. There was one of these eons. I'm calling them an eon. I looked up in the dictionary to make sure an eon, A-E-O-N, was not an actual length of time. It seems to be a rather, it's a long time, but not a definite length of time, which is fine by me. So I use that term here. A cosmic eon is that. But I'm claiming there was a cosmic eon preceding us, one later than us, one proceeding before, and so on, and they just continue indefinitely. Now you see, you might say, well, this is a bit hard to swallow, and that's what lots of people say. It's hard to swallow because isn't the remote future very, very different from a Big Bang? Well, first of all, it's very, very rarefied. It gets very, the density goes down and down and down and down. It's extremely cold. The temperature goes down and down and down. What's the Big Bang like? Density is huge. The temperature is enormous. But you see, when you do this transformation, which with the, I did with the angels and devils, the conformal squashing or stretching, it makes big, when you stretch it, then big temperatures go down and the densities go down. When you squash it, the temperatures go up and the densities go up and they match. So they physically match uh, as well as geometrically matching. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.